Hello! So my webcam on my computer is really bad, but I'm making this selfie book talk video. <laughs> so the book that I'm going to talk about today um, is a graphic novel. It's a young adult graphic novel by a Chinese American named Bell Yang. It's called Forget Sorrow, An Ancestral Tale. This is probably one of the most unique books um, that you will read or that you've read recently, maybe even that you've ever read before, um, because it encompasses so many different things. And it's just very uh, intricate and, and different from a lot of um, novels and even graphic novels that are popular now. So basically, um, it's a current real-time um, story in the present tense, and, and that's Bell Yang, the author's story, her story. But it also switches back and forth and tells a story in the past about her father and her ancestors and their background and their family lineage in China. So it's talking about her life in California with her with her Chinese immigrant parents um, and their life in the past in China um, and the drama between their brothers and their family structure and um, the government things and war and uh, famine and things that were going on in the country at the time. So it's a really interesting um, blend of the past and the present and the two different cultures, the Chinese culture and the American culture. And that's why this is an ancestral tale because it tells both. Um, and so basically the book opens with... Um, Bell Yang, she's just come back from college um, and she's been in this abusive relationship and she's in danger. She's in fear for her life. Her family fears for her life um, because this man has started to stalk her and throughout the novel they call him the rotten egg. That's this man's name who is the abusive boyfriend and uh, so she can't really leave the house. She can't really go anywhere without her father's protection or without being accompanied there even though she's a grown adult because this man stalks her and they are uh, they fear for her life if she were to go out in public by herself and so um, she kind of has this very American very western philosophy and way of living and ideas about the world and about her life whereas her parents have a very old school uh, Chinese um, and East Eastern philosophies and they're Buddhist and uh, so when she comes back and she's living with her parents after being in this abusive relationship there's a lot of tension and I think that's one thing that the illustrations in the book that she captures really really beautifully and the illustrations is the tension in the family relationship so I want to show you um some of these and sorry this is going to be awkward because I don't have my webcam on my computer but I'm going to show you this one page so the top um pane here is her father saying like look how many friends you've lost since you entered into this relationship with this man and you know they're all out in the garden and the next one she's saying she calls him baba that's Chinese that's um a Chinese thing she's saying you're too cynical um and then down to the next one I really love this one this is her and her mother and her father and you have these squiggles above their heads just showing you the tension and, and the things that are left unsaid in the moment. That's what I think is beautiful about graphic novels and about this one specifically is it's capturing what's uh, not being said in the text. Whereas normally you'd have to read between the lines in a regular book, you get that illustration here. So with this one, um, Belle is expressing how she wishes she could be free to walk alone on the beach. And how, um, her mother is in the background saying that her and her father um, want to be free too. And then down here, her father is reprimanding her because of her age and how she's not doing anything career-wise. And she says, you know, I wanted to work. I wanted to go to graduate school. You wouldn't let me. And then you have this really dark uh, pain here where he tells you if you had done those things, Rotten Egg would have found you and he would have killed you. And so this is the really serious moment. And I think that she captures that um, and the illustration really well. And she does this really, really well throughout the whole novel. It's just beautifully done. Um, she is she is an artist first and she's a writer secondarily. And um, there's just some really, really great illustrations in here. Um, so a lot of the stuff that she goes through are war things in China. And so she gives you really, really nice depictions of that um, when she's talking about things in the past. And it's just really, really beautifully done. And um, so this is a great book if you like war stories, um, if you like history. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of Chinese and American history in here, um, recent 20th century stuff. And also, um, if you're interested in Eastern culture, if you're interested in Chinese culture at all, this is a great one for you because... Um, as one of the people on the back of the book that are like praising the book said, um, this one, they, what did she call it? Um, she called it, it has the clean austerity of classical Chinese poetry. So even just the way it is written is, um, is very Chinese-esque. 
and she uses a lot of Chinese words in the book and defines those for us and uh, compares them to their English counterparts. Um, also, if you're interested in Eastern religions um, or philosophies, there's Buddhism in here, there's Taoism in here. Um, she sees both of those in her family ancestry. Um, and then also, of course, that is all, it's a multicultural bit, book because that's all mixed in with her American identity as a Californian being born and raised there. Um, and after a while of staying at home with her parents, she does go to live in China by herself for a while um, and lives and stays with her grandparents in China for a little bit. So there's a little bit of the present day in the book that's happening in China as well. And there's some strife and things happening there politically um, that forces her to go home. So there's some really interesting points when it gets to that point when she's in China and things are really starting to go down and things are starting to get bad. Um, and she's forced basically to come back to America because she learns that if she were to die there, you know, her parents were not going to be able to get her bones or her body uh, sent back to the U.S. because of um, agreement or disagreements between the U.S. and China. And so it's just a really, really interesting book. It has all of those cultural elements, all of those religious and philosophical um, moments. And you have this really, really cool back and forth between the current story and the past like ancestral tale. And um, so I think you gather probably from that first, first pain that she has a little bit of a strained relationship with her dad, um, but it's his story that she's telling throughout this whole thing. And as they spend every day together in this house, um, she's learning from him and she's asking him about their family and their story and their background. And he's telling her this story. And so she, that's when she records it and um, she makes it into this graphic novel format. And through that experience, her and her father's relationship is repaired and um, you start to see them both in a good light. And so it's really just... Um, uh, one of the other people on the back of the book described it as a healing tale because you can tell in the beginning of the story that Belle Yang had had a lot of pain and a lot of trauma associated with this um, abusive relationship and the way that her parents were treating her. And then throughout the book, because she's able to tell this story and she's able to bring this history to light that had been hidden or that had been suppressed, um, she is be becoming happier and she is becoming more aware of who she is, more aware of who her family is. Um, and she's kind of gaining her voice and gaining her platform for art and for creativity and finding out what she wants to do. So it's a really good coming of age story too. So for somebody who doesn't know what they want to do, uh, this is a good one to read because it kind of maps the story of someone who feels lost and feels like she has no idea where to go or what to do or feels stuck or hopeless and uh, she gets out of that in a really really interesting way so I just think this is a fantastic graphic novel again I'll show you the cover that I think you guys will really enjoy that I think you guys should read so thank you for listening